All right, we are ready to go for a huge Saturday prior to the Kentucky Derby. This is as prep a Kentucky Derby scenario as you are going to get every year. It's the triple threat. Now, we're only going to do two out of the three on this show, and that is uh, a reason that we'll explain in just a minute. But big day on Saturday. That does include the Santa Anita Derby. We are going to handicap the Wood Memorial and the Toyota Bluegrass, if it's still called the Toyota Bluegrass Stakes. Uh, seems like it always is. Sort of synom synonymous with a whole bunch of other things, like uh, the Valero Texas Open, which you guys probably have no idea what I'm talking about. But John Hardoon, of course, joining us from the Raggers and Sheets. How's it going, John? Good, thank you. And also joining us, you cannot see him, but you can hear him because he is uh, traveling and he will be uh, on a plane real soon. But he's taking his uh, very difficult schedule. Uh, he's trying to do whatever he can to get on this show. And that's Chad Summers. How's it going, Chad? Oh, well, we're, we're back in the state. Not sure what state, but we're back in the USA. So that's true. We're making progress. Back in the USA. And you're headed to, and you're headed to uh, Kentucky. Why? Uh, heading to Kentucky, some uh, some races on Friday that uh, will have taken place by the time this uh, the show airs, uh, and then uh, we'll get the, you know, see the, see the contenders for the bluegrass on Saturday. Okay, very cool. Um, how was your trip? Um, it's. I'll tell you what. When you when you win, the fifteen hour flight back is uh, very quick. When you finish eleventh. It's, the 15 hour trip feels like 45 hours or two weeks <laughs> so look uh learned a lot of lessons um no regrets of course uh results weren't kind of what we were were hoping and you know it's kind of look you have to you have to have the right horse you know on on paper on the sheets he looked like he was he was a little slow to compete and that's how the race played out so um, you know, if you go back there again next year, you got to know that you got to bring the bring the right horse. All right. Well, persistence. That's what it's all about. All right, Chad. So glad to have you back here in the States. We've got two of the three big prep races to talk about. We don't even have the odds yet as the time we're recording the show. So that's the reason why we're not doing the Santa Anita. Um, maybe uh, I might be able to do it later on with an, a completely different video, but that'll be later on. So let's, uh, before we get started, just wrap up what happened last week. What did you guys feel about the dominating performance from Fierceness? John? Good. I get to bet against him in the Derby now. So he's <laughs> never put two races together. Why is he going to start now? That's That was what we said last week. So, yep. uh, Chad, what Stop. do you think about that? It's not about two races. It's about circumstances. Yes. Well, he's not going to have an easy trip in a twenty-horse field. So. We will see what happens. The race, the the race planned out exactly how I thought it was on the day. Other than the fact that they scratched his fullback for whatever reason, his fullback was not needed, um, and he did it all on his own. And he was much the best as he was supposed to be. I mean, there's there's no there's no doubting his brilliance. Okay, he's a very very talented horse. His Breeders' Cup race last year was the best race of any two-year-old, and his Florida Derby is the best race of any three-year-old. The, the ability is there, okay? It's just a matter of, like John's saying to a point, you know, the consistency needs to show up. But there's no doubting. And, and, and I understand what you're saying, John. I understand he closes the, the favorite. He'll probably be the favorite in the Kentucky Derby. It's tough to sit there and just toss him, though. Because he, you, you go in knowing at any point he is the best horse in the race. Period. End of story. Do you want to rely on a six to five shot in a twenty horse field? Is it going to be six to five in a twenty horse field? I, no, when was the last time we had six to, to five in the Derby? It'll be two to one or five to two, I think. Maybe, I, maybe. I, I, I think he's a must. You whether you want to try and beat him, I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I'm not going to say. I'm not going to say that he's a lock. Like he was in the Florida Derby, which he was a lock in the Florida Derby. That was the free bingo square. But, but, I don't think that you. I'm not. I'm not going to be so quick to dismiss him as maybe some others are. Okay, let's see the post position. We got a long way to go. Let's see if he makes it. So we got to get past those those tricky Kentucky vets too, exactly. as Mike Rapoli knows all too well. Exactly. And and, and I'll tell you what. I, I want to make an announcement on this show. Oh. Okay. So the UAE Derby winner was won by the Japanese horse Forever Young, who's now five for five. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, I watched that horse train for th three weeks. Okay, and he's a very talented horse. If they had a problem with how Forte galloped 
and some of these other horses gallop last year before the Kentucky Derby, and they were all scratched and had fevers and everything else. Me I can't wait. Best. I can't wait till they watch Forever Young gallop. Twitter, the the Twitter veterinarians now on social media when they watch when there's video of this horse training every morning. Uh, what what? How do you say uh, goodbye in Japanese? Arigato. Arigato. I, I, I I think and 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 here's the here's the thing, okay. The horse obviously, despite however he trains in the morning time, however he looks physically, it hasn't affected him. He's won all five races and he finally switches leads, albeit late, but he did switch his leads this time in Dubai. But watching that horse train, as I've watched him train every day, I cannot wait to see her what social media because everybody wants to pick him on top. He's I think he closes the third choice, John, right in the future wager. Everybody well, loves this horse. I but don't guess know. What? Just... Guess what? He still has to come from Dubai and <laughs> and perform five weeks later. It's not happening. That's another I, I'm, one. I'm not talking about performing. I want to see if he gets a, if he gets a, if he's allowed to enter. That's okay. that's what I want to see. Well, how does that work? What? Well, does he have any points? He has hundred points, points last week. Go so he got there. the okay. So he got the hundred points last week. And. Okay. That's it. He's in. If you get fifty points, you're in. You don't have to. I, do well, that's that's the that's the the five million dollar question right now. They have got a couple people on the, uh, you know, hoping to get in with 45, 40 points. We're gonna see what happens this week. It's gonna determine a lot who gets in. What's the name of the horse? Forever Young. And then you have the Baffert factor, and his owner is suing to get in, and his his owner makes a pretty good complaint. I gotta but, tell but you, he can't, but he can't. Because I know he can't, but he still no, made no, a but good here's case. The, here's the problem. Even if you sue, right? Even if you sue and you get an injunction, okay? At the yeah. end of the day, it's still the race is set up where it's points, okay? And it's even even if he says, okay, it's lifted on Baffert, Muth still has zero points. Muth had 100 time, points last week. No, he it? did not. No, he did not because he was not eligible for any points. Okay. Because you might, at, at that point, then you can say, okay, well, the four year old that ran second in the UA Derby has 50 points. Let's let him run. No, you, listen, if he, because here's the thing. And, and and so there would be a countersuit if that. Let's say let's say they say okay, Baffert can run. Okay, and we're going to retroactive all the points that Baffert has foregone. Which, by the way, is not just Muth, but 245 points that Baffert horses have right. earned, and they very well might get 100 points on Saturday in the San Diego Derby with imagination. So you can't say, because it, it it affects how everybody else prepared their horse and races they ran in. That's so true. all of a sudden, if Muth is in, the horses that are 20, 21, 22 on the list who thought they were in, but yeah. now they're not because they don't have those points. Now they're going to counter Sue because they're going to say, hey, I, I ran in this race under this circumstance, knowing that that horse wasn't eligible for points. Yeah. So what, it, is, it, it, what, is it, Churchill, what is Churchill really doing by all this? They're not hell. All they're doing is hurting the game, hurting the horse. You think Baffert gives a damn if he's in a derby or not? He could care less. Believe me. No, no, so no, 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 no. Listen. Bob Baffert very much would like to be in the Kentucky yeah, Derby. Okay. It's, it's it's the it's it, that that'd be like saying you know you don't want to be in the World Series if you're a a, a baseball player or the NBA champ. It's which what you want to be in, right? Whether Bob Baffert needs the Kentucky Derby, no, he doesn't need the Kentucky Derby. But but he's in this industry. He continues to train. Yes. Look, he doesn't need money. He doesn't need accolades. He's but in the, the Hall of Fame already. The game needs the horse a lot more than it needs Baffert. Is all I'm saying. So I all Churchill is doing is hurting the game and hurting the horse. They're not hurting Baffert. Again, I stay. I stand by what I. So I understand what you're saying. You got a plane to catch, so we might as well shake a look. <laughs> how come I don't see the? How come the points aren't on the? I, I'm looking well, at the Kentucky Derby points and that uh, horse. I, I don't know. The horse isn't on there. He's on there. Oh, he's got 100 he's points. Blood horse yep. is doing a bad job of updating it. Then, okay. okay. Um. And then, uh, yeah, so what about Muth? He's not going to race. That's unfortunate. But if he did, uh, what kind well, of a – Chad's telling you he didn't get the point, so he no, can't. I just said win. that. So if he – I just said all. that. So if yeah. he was able to race in it, how he would be a top contender, right? Obviously, we wanted the top three choices, correct. And is the other choice the one that we're going to talk about here, Sierra Leone? It's one of them, I guess. There are a few horses. You got uh, uh, you got the Pletcher horse. You got Sierra Leone. You have the Clement horse. You have uh, – uh, uh, we'll get to it. Let's just do it so we can talk about it. A couple of uh, Brad Cox horses, including yeah. Catching exactly. Freedom and Timberlake. So, Timberlake's, no, Timberlake's out. out. Timberlake is great. He's not running. He said it already. Timberlake's out. Okay. Yes. 
All right, so let's get started with Aqueduct. By the way, who has to rush? It's, it's Chad. You're the one that has, has a, a plane to catch, right? Yeah. Okay, just wanted to make sure. All right, uh, let's go with the Wood Memorial first. This will start about uh, 10 after 4 on Saturday. And uh, we'll start with the one resilience uh, because he's a 6-1 to one shot. So he's definitely going to be one of the top contenders. He's coming off a 16 in the Risen Star uh, his best uh, number was an 11 at Gulfstream when he broke his maiden, but he did not, um, unfortunately, improve upon that. But that could have been a bounce, John. So um, now he's heading back in the right direction, but he's only 6-1. to one. Yeah, he's putting blinkers on. He has the advantage of breaking from the rail at a mile and an eighth, which is the right place to be. The horse will run at 12, maybe a little better, but I don't think that's going to be good enough. But he does have a chance to hit the board. Look, with his running style, I, I, I like this mod form. Originally, they were talking about going to the Florida Derby, and I didn't think that was really the right race for him, although maybe in hindsight he could have finished second and backdoored into the Derby. He, he's okay. And, and you know what? At the top of the stretch, he had a shot to win the race last time. I think he was still a little green. He's still learning things a little bit. This race is not the toughest Derby prep that we'll see. We'll talk about the Bluegrass, which is the, the best Derby prep of them all. Um, I think it's the right spot for this horse. I think this horse is improving. And look, he's a length and a half behind Catching Freedom last time he ran, and Catching Freedom came back and flattered that form by by winning the Louisiana Derby. Yeah, and the horse has also been up and down and up and down. So if that's the case, he would be heading back up uh, in this one. All right, that's the one resilience. The two El Grande O. We've talked about El Grande O several times on the program, John. He's eight to one. He's coming off his best race. That was an eight in the Gotham, even though that was a third place finish. But this is a horse that's run three races this year, all at Aqueduct, 19 to a 14 to an eight. So it went from a five point top to a six point top. What do you think about El Grande 0 at eight to one? The 14 was two races back at a mile and an eighth. That's the distance they're running Saturday. All this horse's races, with the exception of the race, two starts back have been around one turn. I don't like this horse. I think he's heavily raced. You saw what you're going to see. He's not going to get any better at this point. He now makes his 12th start. That's a lot of racing. And again, distance, in my opinion, is a question. A key word there that you mentioned, Jonathan, is heavily. Uh, that's why there's a rider change. Apparently, owner Barry Schwartz did not appreciate the fact that jockey Kendrick Carmuch was one pound over uh, in the last two races. We see the switch to Dylan Davis and you know, they think the one pound might have made a difference in that in that race you're talking about. He was beaten a nose uh, yeah. by Uncle Heavy, ironically enough. And uh, and so they made the rider switch here. Um, there's not a lot of there's not a lot of speed in this race. Um, you know, we'll see what happens with uh, with a little bit of that long shot there and lonesome lonesome boy. But I mean, could he could he make a clear lead here and get a little brave or is is you feel like he's just not fast enough? No, I don't think he wants a mile and an eighth, and I think he's going to react. I, off, I I think he's going to react off of the eight that he ran last time out. So I can see that. that. All right, uh, the three that is a long shot that we don't really have to talk about. The four is deterministic, seven to five shot, twelve first time out, seven in the Gotham win uh, last month. So this is the horse to beat. What about deterministic, John? Well, at least Clement is doing the right thing. He was considering training this horse right into the Derby, which would have been ridiculous to expect the horse to go two turns for the first time in the Derby in a 20-horse field. We love this horse the last time he ran, if you remember, off of the 12 early as a two-year-old. He's fine. He's 7-5. to five. You know, he's got enough time from the 7. We're going to find out how good he really is. This is this is the the old adage to me, John, and I don't know I don't know what to make of this. And, and you, you've done this a long time. And 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 from what you're saying, you're saying that you don't think it'll affect him, right? He had the time between you know two to three. He ran the number. He can certainly uh, replicate the number. And 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 if he replicates the number, he's he's the winner. I for me, I don't like that he 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 shipped up from Florida to New York, back to Florida, back up to New York on a lightly raced horse. And I just. I think that he's a bounce candidate, even though, okay, he does have some time. It's not a ton of time no, uh, no. between races. I, I just, look, if he moves forward, he moves forward. Um, and he's, his, his last race was certainly the best in the field. 
Um, I just I, I think as the favorite, I think he is a balanced candidate. By the way, this is the type, this is what we could see, and I think you guys might agree, especially after what you just said, Chad, is if Deterministic does say bounce, it doesn't have a great race, and loses the race, he still could be the winner of the Derby. Because unlike fierceness, we're expecting him possibly to go the other way, and maybe deterministic will go back into a forward position. So maybe if you want to bet on deterministic in the Derby, you're probably rooting for him to lose on Saturday. Unless they spray paint, unless they spray paint Churchill Downs green and make it grass, I'm not picking deterministic to win the Derby. Oh wow! Okay, <laughs> heavy against deterministic, like it. All right, next up, we're gonna forget about these two long shots, unless you guys uh, three long shots. Uh, tell me, do you have anything on pro- protective yeah. or evening news? No. Yeah, e- evening news is going to be my live long shot. Look, we, oh. we got it right last week with uh, the Safi Joseph horse that ran second. Um, I'll take evening news here at a little bit of a price. Um, I think it's he, – he, he shipped up early. I've been watching him train all week long up here at Belmont. He, he, he certainly catches the eye. He's, he's coming into the race in, in good form. We saw an old claimer win the derby before in Ridge Strike. I'm not saying that this horse is Ridge Strike. Um, but he's trending in the right direction. And Michael Pino does a very, very good job. I, I think this horse is sitting on a big race at, at, at what will be a, a big price because he's only going to drift up because it's not super popular connections. Yeah, the good thing is is that, it's, like you said, he's just, the line, the sheet line is really good, except that it's mostly on synthetic. So It's all on synthetic with the exception of one race. Yeah, that turf race. No, but he's trying... He- He's trained okay. At, look, I know okay. he's trained. Well, he's, you know what you're he's trained for. okay. He's trained okay on the dirt. He, he catches the eye. Okay. okay. Well, getting yeah. getting the price. Uh, by the way, Merritt is also a twenty to one. The seven horse. He has also improved each one of his three races. Three point top, two point top. He had a thirteen last time out, um, but thirteen or twelve or eleven. Not sure that's going to win the race. John, what about uh, Merritt as a long shot? Yeah, he's fine. You know, you can never disregard Safi Joseph. Last week, Chad found one of his horses at a big price that ran second. So he's okay. I mean, you know, he's the second tier. He's not as good as the top contenders, but he's like in the B group. You there, Chad? Did we lose you? Chad, you there? I'm back now. Was that Uh, We were talking about Merritt. No, I don't like him. Okay. Next up, uh, Elysian Meadows, a 15 to 1 shot who is also heading in the right direction in all three of his races, John, and a little bit better 17, 14, and 12. So, what about uh, Elysian Meadows compared to Merritt? He still has improving to do. I would rather play, I don't know, it's close. I would bet the longer one between, if I was using one of them, it would have to be the longer price. Chad, anything with Elysian Meadows? You there, I mean, Chad? It was John's top pick. He 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 is two. Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yep. Can you, can you hear me, Greg? Yes. Okay. Good to go. I mean, look. I mean, the good thing for him is that his wins, his wins did come in Aqueduct. That's yes. Good. So I mean, if you're if you're looking for, if you're looking for 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 a play, and like I said, that race at Tampa, it can it, it, it horses like it, they don't like it. You can throw that race out if you throw that race out. It was the best race of his life, so off the sheet. So if you're looking to throw him out, find another reason. <laughs> he could. The numbers were right. So. <laughs> All right. Next up, we have one of the top contenders, to, uh, Tuscan Sky, the nine horse, Pletcher, four to one, two races, a 10 and an eight. Very impressive, John. Yeah, both of them were on a wet track, you know. So that's the question. Was it the wet track that moved him up? I don't know. Listen, off if you're looking at numbers, nothing wrong with the horse. He ran an eight last time out. Not many horses in this field could say that. Chad? Look, here's here's the thing with Tuscan Sky. He was very good when he broke his maiden in Aqueduct. Okay. He came back and he and he and he took it to Nash and Nash came back and won the stake race, albeit not the Arkansas Derby, but the undercard. He won, he won a big race over there at Oakland, so flatter the form of this horse. The problem with this horse is he's gotten his ass kicked by Fierceness the last three times they breezed together. Now, here's the thing. Fierceness showed what he can do to any... Oh. Chad is out. By the way, until we get Chad back, you're, t- you're totally not interested in the next three horses, right? 10, 11, 12 have no shot, and the 13 yeah. probably has no shot. Well, 
we'll talk about so him can, as long you as you go fastest so chad we can get chad in here so if you want to get to well the uncle heavy the 13 is an eight to one shot coming off at 12 in the win at the withers so he hasn't raced in a while but uh that was a pretty solid 12 uh he is eight to one though on the outside post yeah he's one he's running from a very difficult post to win from all right, and that's Uncle Heavy, the eight to one shot. So, John, while we're waiting for Chad, who do you like? I'm going to go with deterministic the four and put him in exact is over the one resilience over the uh, nine Tuscan Sky four over one and nine. All right, Chad, appreciate it. I know you got to run, get on that plane, and we'll talk to you guys next week. All right, thank you. Stay safe and be well, everybody. All right, so there you go. That wraps it up for our coverage of the – actually, this is it, the last big prep for the Kentucky Derby. Um, and so this week, let's just wrap up the picks. So, look, nothing much to wrap up with the big one, the Bluegrass. They're both going to go 6 over 410. So they're, they're going to go with the three – the hot shot horses, just a touch. They both like just a touch first. And then they're going with the uh, they're going with uh, Doorknock over Sierra Leone. So that's the play from the big boys. I am just going with the best horse, like I said. That's it. I'm not screwing around here. Um, I saw what happened with Fierceness last week, and I was like, you know what? Yeah, I, I just – I think Sierra Leone has – you know, what, what I'm really looking forward to is if Sierra Leone does win and – that was the last race we saw from both Sierra Leone and Fierceness. And then we go to the Derby, and they're the two top choices because they will be if Sierra Leone wins. And let's say he wins impressively, like Fierceness almost. Well, I can't expect him to win that easy. The fact is, it's going to be such a great contrast to have you know the pace setter against the closer. So that could be really, really interesting. And it could be a heck of a race. Um, but first things first, we get through this weekend. By the way, the Wood Memorial picks. Uh, John is going to take the four deterministic. That's his top choice over the one nine resilience and the nine being uh, Tuscan Sky. Uh, Chad, meanwhile, is going with resilience as his top choice. And I didn't catch uh, what uh, the other pick by Chad. I know he also liked the long shot, uh, which was uh, evening news. So I'm sure that was one of the horses that he threw under. For me, I am uh, just taking Tuscan Sky. And I'm taking uh, Tuscan Sky. Uh, the fact that I'm getting 4-1, to one, I'm getting a little bit better odds uh, in this one than Deterministic. And he's got a better sheet line. I mean, no Deterministic, Deterministic has the 7. Tuscan Sky has the 8. Uh, but uh, I also like the fact that Tuscan Sky has got a couple of extra weeks off. Um, and then I'll go over the 1-8. I'll throw in Resilience in there. And I'm going to throw in Elysian Meadows because I like Elysian. I like the fact that you have Lascano is having a hot meet. Mato is a great trainer. Two for two at Aqueduct. And the sheet line is really solid. 17, 14, and 12. Okay. So that's going to wrap it up. Next week, uh, we have... What do we have next week? The Lexington, right? So next week, which will be the 13th, That'll be the Saturday, the 13th. You've got the Lexington at Keeneland. And you also have two other graded stakes races at Keeneland with the Jenny Wiley. That's a grade one. So that we're definitely doing Keeneland next week. That's for sure. Uh, we probably will also do Oaklawn Park because they have the grade one Apple Blossom. So we've got two grade ones next week and we have the Lexington. So we still have some good races to talk about on next week's show. I want to thank everybody for joining us, and uh, that's going to wrap it up. So once again, Patreon, click the link in the description, only $5 a month, or you can sit here and wait for us to, I don't know, possibly post the video on YouTube. I don't know. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't, but this week we will. And we'll see everybody again next week.